make sure you smash the living crap out of that subscribe button so we can get to 800 and eventually 1,000 subscribers now that my piece of shit PC will hopefully actually work as I have the ban list pulled up and actually this light makes me look a little bit good. So at number five here, I have Cyberjar and Fiberjar. Um, you know, when you think about cards in the jar family of stuff, Morphing Jar, Morphing Jar 2, you know, you think of degeneracy. You think about drawing a lot of cards. Here's the thing, though. We're not seeing Morphing Jar or Morphing Jar number 2 seeing any play, and Morphing Jar number 2 is no longer banned. I even double-checked to make sure because I had no idea if it was still even banned or not. And Morphing Jar 1 and 2 are just, they're flip monsters that are slow. We're in a different time in Yu-Gi-Oh! where flip effects just aren't what they used to be and if you're trying to do like empty jar it, you can't do it unless you have multiple jars and you can't loop something like cyber jar because when it flips it's going to destroy all the other monsters um so for those of you who don't know what cyber jar and fiber jar do because they're just so old um cyber jar is a obviously a flip effect monster um and has the effect that whenever it's flipped face up it destroys all monsters on the field, including itself, if you just flip it up. And then both players look <clears throat> look at the top five cards. Really, it's excavate now. But you excavate cards from the top of your deck until you summon the same number of monsters that you had on your field when it was destroyed. So if you had three monsters when Cyber Jar uses effect, you would summon out three new monsters and face down defense. If your opponent had four, they'd summon out four. So... It's it, it can mill at the same time. I don't think something could really abuse it unless it's something like Infernoids, where even then they have to set the jar and then flip the jar, which the jar could just get popped or something by a card effect to like mill a bunch of their Infernoids and hit the Decatron. Um, so I just I don't really think it would see any play. Same goes for Fiber Jar. Yeah, it resets the game. You take all the cards in your hand, field, and graveyard in the deck. Both players shuffle their decks and then draw five new cards. But, I mean, unless you're playing like Exodia, do you really care? And even then, do you really want to put all your cards back to restart the game? It just doesn't seem all that good. And like, if you're playing some sort of banishing deck, like are you supposed to abuse it that way? It just doesn't make any sense to me. So I feel like these cards can come back. I feel like we're just in a different time in Yu-Gi-Oh now. Uh, so at number four, I have Trap Dust Shoot. Now, Trap Dust Shoot, I know is going to be a bit of a controversial pick because, you know, it's it's really good if you go first and you open with it. But that's also the thing. You have to go first. You have to open with it. And it only hits monsters. Keep that in mind. You know, I was playing a, a build of Go Control uh, a while back, and I was playing three copies of Trap Dust Shoot. But... In that format, especially if you're playing against something like Burn that doesn't play a lot of monsters, then the Dust Shoots just give you knowledge about what's in the opponent's hand. Um, and especially at just one copy, you're really not going to be able to have it be that reliable. Like, yeah, if you open with it, okay, you you sack the opponent with it. There's a lot of cards in Yu-Gi-Oh that sack the opponent. The Change of Heart is a perfect example mind control debatably is a good example and so i feel like having dust shoot at one really wouldn't see a whole lot of play because it doesn't progress your game state and especially with a lot of combo heavy decks you know if they don't open any monsters then it's just dead you just have the knowledge um if they open like in branded if they open alu bar but then have the branded fusion anyway okay you're gonna shuffle the alu bar back Okay, cool. Or they only have Fallen of Albaz, or they have both copies of their Albaz. Okay, you just sent an Albaz back. They don't mind having that in the deck. So I feel like Dust Shoot could be a card that we could see return into the game at some point. Um, so that's my reasoning for that. At number three, we have Ultimate Offering. So Ultimate Offering is a continuous trap card. You pay 500 life points to gain an additional normal summon. Now, uh, I believe the way that this is currently ruled is that you can still do it during either player's turn and also either player's battle phase. So like what people would do back in the day with ultimate offering gadgets, <clears throat> excuse me, you would um, use like red gadget, green gadget, yellow gadget, get your pluses, use ultimate offering to summon out more gadgets, ex make exceeds like utopia and all that and just OTK for game. The problem with ultimate offering though, again, is that 
the, the problem that we have now in Yu-Gi-Oh! unless you're playing Elder Lich is that it's a trap card. You have to set it. You have to hope that it doesn't get popped. Then you can play it. And then you start paying your 500 life points. And God forbid that there's a fucking Masquerade Dragon on the board that you're paying 1,100 life points in total to get that additional normal summon. Um, you know, maybe one can make the argument that you put a hard once per turn on it, and then you can only use it on your turn. But I just feel like Ultimate Offering isn't all that good anymore. I mean, honestly, the more that I think about it, and the more that I've even thought about a card like Change of Heart, like you think, oh my god, that card's broken. But when you really sit back and look at Modern Yu-Gi-Oh!, you're like, it's good, but I mean, it's more of a sacky card than anything. Monster Born used to be this, oh my god, so broken card, and it's like, okay, you, you drew it, and you're going to play out a monster from my graveyard. You're going to get my Mirror Jade. Cool. Um, swing for game. I guess you win. Like, it, it's just one of those things, right? So... I feel like we could eventually see Ultimate Offering return into the game. Um, my next pick, uh, some people are going to give me hate for this, is Royal Oppression. Now, let me let me preference this. I do think Royal Oppression needs an errata. The thing is, is that Royal Oppression is essentially Vanity's Emptiness, right? For those of you who don't know, Royal Oppression is a continuous trap that I believe is still ruled that uh, either player can use it, even though you control it. It, my, my my brain's a bit foggy when it comes to that from years ago, but what it does is that any time that the opponent special summons, you can pay 800 life points to uh, negate it and destroy the monster. Um, so you have a floodgate that instead of like Vanity's Emptiness where if a card gets sent to your grave, that it would pop itself, you just pay 800 to stop special summons. So paying 800 was cool even before Cleave Fort Scout or Curse Held in. Um, so I feel like that there would need some sort of restriction on this, though. I feel like that something like this, especially when it comes to special summoning, no matter if it's a spell, a monster, or a trap, will always be good to some degree when you're able to shut out a game mechanic. Look at Imperial Order, shutting out spells, a concept of the game is, was just way too good. I feel like putting like a hard once per turn on it would really fix oppression. Um, at the same time, I do feel like that it could potentially come back without any sort of uh, errata that I think more likely than not Konami would have to release an errata for roll oppression. Finally, last on my list is an oldie that used to be an FTK goodie, Butterfly Dagger Elma. So Butterfly Dagger Elma years ago was used in a FTK deck that really looking back at it now would not be good in modern Yu-Gi-Oh. I feel like that this card could come to one, possibly even to three. Um, because of the fact that it was used in an FTK, I don't feel like it will ever come back. But to have a card like that come back, you know, I think people would be happy for it. It wouldn't really that be very big of an impact. I mean, it would just be one of those things like, you know, okay, whatever. Kind of like Symbols of Heritage, you know. It was, I think it was banned for time. Now it's a three and no one plays it. No one cares. So it's one of these things that's like Konami, take it off the ban list. You know, I remember years ago, I think it was like Robbie Cole or someone had said, that Konami wants to eventually unban every card on the ban list, which I think is just fucking impossible without erratas and just complete changes and overhauls to cards. Um, but if that is the case, then you can cross off Butterfly Dagger, Butterfly Dagger Elma, try saying that 10 times fast, off your list. Guys, thank you for watching. Uh, let me know what other cards you think could be unbanned. I'd be curious to know what you think. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.